if you hit that subscribe button, that notification bell, you're going to be missing out on videos and free prizes and raffles we have coming up. Hey friends, James from HowToRinch.com and today I got a quick little tip on handlebars and torquing bolts and whatnot. We've got some uh, aftermarket uh, risers here. Kenny, tell me about this. Do you know what brand or anything this is? Um, it is... No, I'd have to look it up. Okay. But you had a little tip over. Uh, rock and roll and he does track days on this and check out that. He's using all his tire. Look at that. <laughs> anyway, uh, he felt that there wasn't enough of a gap in here and that the camp, the handlebars just weren't getting the clamping force. So, say, so, hey, let's just yank this off quick. And what we did is we literally took and measured like what the gap was here. We took this clamp and you can see on the, on the backside, it's touching. And then what we did is we just sanded off, uh, it ended up being 24 thousandths is what we took off because we wanted that intentional space in there so that when we torque these down, they could clamp the bar. Some service manuals will specifically, I'll use Kawasaki for example, where they'll specifically say to tighten the front ones first to a torque spec and then tighten these so that you aren't accidentally touching here and not being able to get the correct clamping force. So it's really important that you know what you're doing. The other thing you could kind of see from these, these aftermarket risers here, who knows if this was perfectly you know, machined, but what we basically have now is we're touch on this side and we're gonna pull it down on this side and, uh, and make it work. Trying to hit any buttons? They're tusk. Uh, tusk? Tusk bar risers are the 30 right. millimeter. Cool. Oh, hey, one other tip. You notice when I took it apart, one of the things I had mentioned, and this is the hard thing because I know there's some really die-hard loyal people out there. Notice we're protecting body work and stuff here with the towel. Is that if you're following an OEM manual, I don't care if it's Suzuki, Kawasaki, Harley, it doesn't matter. If you're you're not gonna see stuff that you need to know from the aftermarket world. So one of the things is that this kit had stainless steel bolts. And when you use stainless in aluminum, it's quite a common practice that you wanna use an anti-seize. And I want you to think about what anti-seize says there, anti-seize lubricant, is that typically you're using anti-seize when you have two dissimilar metals. So like when you have steel and aluminum, or in this case, stainless and aluminum, this is the stuff that will lubricate that joint to not cause the galling so that uh, even as installation removal doesn't pull uh, metal and transfer or the fact that they just corrode differently and they can seize together. So anti-seize can be your best friend. Now, you have to be careful of that. Kenny here is doing track days and he's being super legit on checking his bike out, tightening fasteners, retorquing things. Matter of fact, when he pulled up, I kind of got a kick out of the fact that his handlebar riser bolts actually had torque stripe so he could tell if they moved. Way cool, good job, Kenny, dig it. But so the other thing you gotta be careful of is even on aftermarket part, especially a race part where they say to put anti-seize on, the factory might have used Loctite. You know, like you're, you're just breaking the rules. You gotta think about when you break the rules, what those consequences might be. And the biggest consequence usually is that there's more maintenance, okay? All right, so your uh, factory spec you said was 16.5. 16.5, many of you seen me using the e-torque brand torque wrenches here, still in love with these things. I never like to go to full torque, so I just went low. I'm gonna put the lock on. I'm still loving the, the feel of these. And I'm a big fan of back and forth, back and forth. Okay. Okay, remember those are the ones we want to seat. Now we're gonna roll around and create the uh, clamping force. Check uh, with the camera, is there still a gap? We're kind of experimenting on did we remove enough? Yep. Happy? Yep, that's good. Okay, that was only, so I've got it in another video and, and I've talked about the torque wrenches. I could have grabbed a torque wrench that was you know, like 10 to 75 pounds, but I really want to get one that is in the more the middle of the range. So I grabbed the inch pound one, I have to convert it. So you got to take the 16.5 times 12, which was 198. And then I'll get this cranked up. There's one, I'll do the finish here, let me dial in. I just think these are so cool. I've been happy capture on film. So we're one, we're rolling up on 190. Okay, right at that zero. And we said we need 198, simple enough. And even has the half steps. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Lock it, torque it. 
Have you used these yet? I have not. Let's trade. I'm gonna, I want you to get a feel for it. Cause you've got a, what brand torque wrench? Harbor Freight. Harbor Freight. All right, I want you to see how this feels Are for you, you. So we're torquing all four still? Yep. We're starting on the top? Yep, I do the top two first. It's probably not gonna move now. And you always wanna hold your hand right in the middle. Okay. That's actually uh, where you wanna be. Okay. And put your palm here. If you don't mind I'm me always, giving you some tips. No, please do. Yeah, I'm, so, I'm always uh, fearful of altering the torque by manipulating something wrong. Yep, so what you wanna do is what I call palming. And that okay. keeps the fastener where it needs to be. Gotcha. And all torque wrenches, every brand, you have to actually grab the handle. Okay. So go ahead and pull. I like how smooth and even you're going. You can always re-ratchet if you're uncomfortable. Yeah, that was nice. How'd that feel? Good click. I'd 10 times rather have somebody be cautious than ramp into it. Now, from how you've used the torque wrench before, what do you think about that palming technique? Do you feel more confident? Uh, yeah, I suppose so. Because it doesn't want to slip out on you. Right. You know what I mean? Like, you're probably watching you work so far. You're kind of pretty intentional in what you do. But... We're definitely going to get more clamping force just based on the fact that this side's walking a lot. You know, it's going... We're going beyond my marks. Well, I'm going to tell you what. We, uh, we probably wouldn't have wanted to go any less. Because that gap is... It's there, though, and that's what we want. Yeah. So we want that gap, and that's all we need. We don't want a mile. Right. We don't need it. But anyway, my friends, e-torque torque wrenches, DRZs, super modified and kicking ass. Let's get this ugly towel off there and make it look cool. But this is a cool bike. You know, while we got you here, uh, I know you've been doing track days here in Phoenix, but what are some of the accessories? Obviously, tires. Ooh, uh, yeah. You got a lot of stuff. Definitely different tires. Different uh these pegs are a little higher. I can't remember call the brand. I'm terrible at remembering brands, but no worries. Peg sliders, um, obviously the bar risers, uh, the rubber killers. That's a big deal. The rubber killers. So mm. that just gives you more connection to the steering. Yeah. Um, and then definitely the stainless steel brake lines. Huge change in the brakes. You got sliders. Yep. Uh, that's actually OEM, but yep, those those are. Good. Is that one loose? Uh, it's just a terrible design. It's, it's basically rubber. In gotcha. There and it down. Well, that back one sure held up. Uh, actually, the bolt bent in that. So if you turn that now, it spins and wobbles because the, the bolt bent. Gotcha. That impact. Uh, what else? Turn signals, they make you go uh, faster, right? Oh, yeah. <laughs> uh, the case savers, that's a big deal for crash protection. When this, uh, when the bike goes down, this hits, and oh, you yeah. go right through a magnesium case. That's a big problem with these. You can just drop it in the parking lot and bust that case. Yeah. So you just. I'm going to tell a funny story. So I'm new to Phoenix and I'm looking for friends and kind of, you know, trying to meet people hard in 2020. What a nightmare. I never thought it'd be so hard to meet people. And how I actually hooked up with uh, Kenny and didn't seem like a weirdo is I saw him whip it through a Harbor Freight parking lot. We were both in there shopping and I saw this Red Bull catch can. I said, I bet that's some bitch does track days. And the rest is history. We can't wait to get on the track together and rip it up. Awesome. Well, cool bike. Um, appreciate you uh, letting me grab that on film and just the importance of modifications and thinking about what you're doing and all that other good stuff. So anyway, as always, make sure and like, share, subscribe, all that good stuff. Make it a great day. And as always, keep wrenching.